Hello everybody, this is Tim here once again with his with my review for Hellraiser or Hell World. Evil goes online. Great pinhead in the internet. Fucking amazing. Oh god. When five Hardcore internet gamers are invited to a social party thrown by the website Hellworld. They are about to endure a night of unspeakable terror they believed only existed in cyberspace. <sighs> Directed by Rick Boda, starring Lance Hendrickson, uh, Catherine Winnick, Christopher Jacot, and Doug Bradley as Pinhead. It was hard for me to make it through this movie. It was... Um, this movie was a little bit more enjoyable for me this time, just a little bit, because I was watching it as a generic, a really generic, badly done slasher, instead of judging it by, like, as a Hellraiser film. This film is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. You're scraping the bottom of the barrel with this one. You're just, I'll go ahead and say it. One star. One star. I give this film. One star. It barely makes up the one star, just because one or two of the slashing scenes were entertaining. Um... You got the fucking guy that plays Superman and Man of Steel in this movie, so that was kind of funny. Henry Cavill is in this movie. Um, just to jump into this, there's like this internet game called Hell World, and it's like a game based off like the Hellraiser mythology or whatever. It's never clear if it's based off like the films, uh, the Hellraiser films, or if it's based off of like the actual Hellraiser mythology, but it has to be the films because like the voice on the game is Doug Bradley and everything, so... Uh, it has to be it has to be based off the films. This is like a trying to do a Wes Craven's New Nightmare take uh, on Hellraiser. The movie, I guess, is maybe trying to be a tribute to the fans, you know, with all the like the Hellraiser stuff and everything in it. Like the the guy who Lance Henriksen's character has all this collectible Hellraiser stuff and everything. I guess it's kind of kind of trying to be a tribute to the fans and everything, which is fine. But you know, there's just not enough to it. You know, I need more than that. You know, still you have to have a thing called story. Good story characters uh good characters worst characters i've ever seen in any of these films are in this film worst characters i've ever seen are in this entire franchise or in this film thus far hell is revelations i'm getting you i'm getting you i'll get to you next and <laughs> well, then we'll you this film will have some competition with that one but uh as far as this film goes this is the worst characters i've seen thus far in the franchise and it's really late and i'm so fucking tired and it took everything i had to make it through this movie it took a lot for me to make it through this movie <sighs> but, uh, the characters are just fucking horrible. They're horrible. They're just typical teenage characters. Um, but there's, they're all addicted to this game called Hell World. It's like a shitty Hellraiser fucking online game. Uh, I'm waiting for the movie where they make where everybody's addicted to World of Warcraft or something. <laughs> fucking shit's gonna be next. But they're all addicted to a Hellraiser online game. And they all win, uh, like this contest online while they're playing the game where they can go all, <clears throat> They can go all like a to a Hell World party or whatever, hosted by Lance Henriksen. Lance Henriksen in a Hellraiser film is cool, but his character is worthless and doesn't do anything. Uh, and this film is worthless and doesn't do anything or add anything to the mythology of this franchise. But um, so they all win, uh, and they get to go to the party. Uh, I'm so fucking tired. It's gonna take a lot to do this review for me because this film just sucks the cock so hard. But I'll I'll try. I'll try. Uh, they had a friend who was like really addicted to it. He, he was super addicted to Hellraiser, I guess. His name, the character's name was Adam, and he like so addicted to it, he made his own puzzle box and then burned himself alive like a fucking retard. Or not, not a retard. I don't want, I don't want to try. I don't want to insult handicap people. I'm trying to fucking moron is the better word. A fucking moron. So the fucking moron burns himself alive, and then they got this other friend named Jake who was like good friends with Adam, and he blames like all of them, himself included, for not uh, seeing the warning signs that Adam was so addicted to the game that he was going to commit suicide. So he blames all of, all of them, including himself, that uh, they didn't stop him, you know, or try to, or didn't see the warning signs. Uh, but he acts like a dick towards the rest of the, the group, though. I mean, like, he blames himself and them for Adam's death, and, but he's fucking, like, personal attacks them every time they try to talk to him. He's like, you guys don't never do anything, Ryder. You guys don't do this. You guys don't do that. And I'm like, fuck you, asshole. But anyway, so they're all at the party. Lance Henriksen's hosting. You find out, dun-dun-dun, he was actually Adam's dad. So he wants to get revenge on them, I guess, all for not saving him or letting or something. I don't know. But he, they're all at the party. Uh, it's the Leviathan house. Ah, ha, 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 ha. 
and he's got them all at the party, and some fucking, this will bug the shit out of me for fucking ever. Ever. They're all at the party, right? Okay, so he has, he, what he, his plan is, is to drug them each one, then bury them alive with, like, fucking homemade uh, pipes for them to get oxygen from them. <laughs> and so he can send them some liminal messages and cause each one of them to die, I guess, by some random means. I, I don't fucking know. Uh, but, um, so he can fuck with them, I guess, punish them for what happened to his son. And so he has to drug each one of them one at a time. So you see him, like, you can tell when one of them's getting drugged. So he would drug one, right? While the party's going on in front of the other ones, and he has to take that person, get them out of the party without the other 30 guests seeing it, plus their friends seeing it, and then bury them alive, each one, one at a fucking time. How did he do that? How was that possible? That is like a plot hole, like the size of fucking John Holmes' dick. It's so big that it, you could, it's just like impossible not to fucking notice. But anyway, not just that one. But not just that fucking plot hole, but, I mean, it makes no sense if you think about it. I mean, what did, what else could he have done? Like, each one of them passed out, and then he, like, uh, the rest of them just kept partying and ignored their friend was passed out and didn't grab him and say, we better get the fuck out of here, something's wrong with my buddy. And I'm like, what? Okay. Another thing that cracks me up, okay, he's sending them subliminal messages through, like, cell phones he's got planted down in their coffins with them that's uh, telling them what they're saying in their own little fantasy drugged-out world. Um... So Henry Cavill's character like meets up with a chick at the party and she like sucks his dick for like fucking thirty or forty minutes. So I'm trying to get this straight. So Lance Henderson is on the phone and Henry Cavill is in his coffin and he's like sending subliminal messages to Henry Cavill going, All right, she's sucking your dick. She's sucking it now. Ten minutes, thirty minutes, it going, going, gone. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why the fuck would he say that? <laughs> Why would he, why would Lance Henriksen's character, who's wanting revenge on these kids, fucking give this guy a fantasy where he's getting his dick sucked for 30 or 40 minutes? That makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And in the movie, he tells them about this nun, like this nun that used to live in the house. And then when they're having, like, they're in their drugged out fantasies, for some reason, Jake's character, like, sees the nun and, like, starts following her. And he makes it up there, and she's, like, stripped naked. And, you, and then she starts fucking him. And that right there, I make I me mean, knock the movie down to zero when that scene came about in the film, because I was like, what the fuck? Okay, so Lance Henriksen's character is not only saying that to Henry Cavill, but also he's talking to Jake, going, all right, you will follow her nun. All right, and the nun you will see, and you will follow upstairs. She will be naked. You will fuck this nun. The nun will be fucked. The nun will fuck you. The end. <laughs> oh, God. It, it's taken everything I got to finish this review. <laughs> So why, why would he give him a random fantasy about fucking a nun? <laughs> the, the chick looks good, but you know that it's not enough for me to add anything to the film here. A, a hot nun is not enough for me to recommend this film. This film sucks, sucks the cock hard, hard, so hard. This film is fucking horrible. <laughs> The more I talk about the horrible shittiness of it is the more I fucking hate it. But I'm going to try to restrain. I'm going to try to leave it at one star. But so he fucks a nun. <laughs> then they all start getting killed off one by one. One of the guys fucking goes down. He's looking for his asthma inhaler. And fucking Pinhead shows up in the random... <laughs> like Pinhead... The Pinhead scenes in here are so shitty. It's not even really Pinhead, first of all. It's just a hallucination version of him. So Pinhead shows up in generic slasher movie fashion. Just takes up a big weapon and cuts the dude's head off. Totally nothing like how Pinhead would kill somebody or go about doing something. It's just so fucking stupid and feels like feels like it could be any character and not even have to be Pinhead doing this kind of stuff because it's not what the Pinhead character does. It's just a generic decapitation. Henry Car Henry Cavill, okay, Superman got just got his dick sucked for like thirty minutes. He goes down. <laughs> he's fucking messing around like in the bottom of the house. Um, there's this big chain that gets uh. He gets he gets a decent death. His death is decent. Superman fucking gets like hooked in his back and gets strung up and bleeds to death. There's like blood flowing, uh, landing everywhere on the fucking floor. Um, that was neat. Okay, death. Um, once again, Pinhead just drops in though. He, Pinhead keeps saying stupid shit like uh, the main character's name is Chelsea, uh, and he keeps like every time he sees her, he's like, "You do you believe Adam now, Chelsea?" <laughs> like what the fuck ever, Pinhead. Uh, 
Doug Bradley paycheck collecting here. I've heard that Hellraiser Debtor and Hellraiser Hellworld, this one, were both shot back to back. They could have took the money from this shit fest and then from the okay Debtor, combined them together, and made one decent movie. But no, no, we got to try to go for broke. We got to make two movies on shoestring budgets to try to get as much uh, fucking rental fees or as we can get from this shit or buying fees or whatever the fuck. The fans will like it. Pinhead's on the cover. Fuck them. End of story. Fuck the fans. End of story. Rick Boda, I don't mind the guy. I mean, he seems like a decent guy and he does seem like he cares about the Hellraiser and mythology. And he does seem like he cares about the characters. Uh, starting from when he started directing in the franchise, Hellraiser, Hellseeker, it's a decent movie. It's all right. It's a retread movie. By then, you can tell the franchise is starting to run out of steam. Hellraiser, Debtor, it's just okay. You can tell there's this about the franchise is about dead by that point. And this movie, it's buried. It's it's dead and buried. It's dead and buried with this movie. Um. But he seems like a cool guy, a decent guy. The films aren't so much horribly directed. They're just really fucking shitty. Um, and then you got like this other, the, one of the other, there's this like English girl, I guess. And she's like one of their friends. And she gets in this like fucking torture device. And Lance Henriksen shows up there and like pulls out this little uh, fucking, uh, pulls this uh, screw out or something like that that's connected to the device that makes it lethal. Uh, as long as it's uh, kept in there, the device can't uh, come on. But he pulls it out and it comes on. It's an okay death. I mean, it's like two saw blades and they're like spinning directly towards her neck and they fucking like rip it open. Uh, and she starts bleeding out. That was a decent death. Okay. But once again, this film has such a horrible vibe to it with the whole Hellraiser slasher vibe. Uh, Pinhead is just like a generic slasher who shows up for like two seconds just to do a kill and then disappear. This just makes this film so fucking worthless. Um, I'll get to why I hate this film. Uh, towards the end here. I'll get to why I hate it so much. And then fucking Henry Cavill uh, and then the, the the girl who got her throat cut open, they, they like come back to life as fucking like zombies or whatever and they're like chasing after the character Chelsea and uh, they're fucking like zomb fucking zombies or whatever and they're, like, and they're talking and uh, the 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 girl who got her throat cut open is like, Welcome to fucking hell world, Chelsea or something like that. And I'm like, Oh god, oh god. Oh oh this is pushing the suicide button. In Revelations is truly much worse than this. I may not I may not survive. I'm i I seriously may not survive. I may commit suicide after watching that movie. But anyway, just to jump into this film here back into this film. Uh, Adam finally realized uh, not fucking Adam but Jake he realizes that everything's like illusions or whatever and they figure out that uh, Lance Henriksen is actually the character Adam their friend he's, he's his father uh, how they figure that out because all this is just one big delusion so Lance Henriksen what he can make him see anything he wants him to see so he told him while he was talking to him giving him subliminal messages that he was Adam's father that they should find a photo with him and Adam together so that they would know he was his father why would he want him to know that? Why would he even give a fuck? I, I don't know. Maybe he wants him to know to make his revenge more sweeter, I guess, so they know who's doing it and why he's doing it. I don't know. And then, fucking, after Jake and Chelsea decide to get the fuck out of Dodge, um, Lance Henriksen shows up and he's trying to stop him at the party. Uh, and the fucking Chelsea does a, a kung fu kick and knocks him off top of the balcony. And then right there, right there, movie... Right there, you've done it. You've done it right there. <laughs> when you start jerking out Busta Foo, fucking Busta Rhymes Foo, Halloween Resurrection Busta Rhymes Foo in a Hellraiser film, you might as well just give up. You just give up. Just call it quits. Summon Pinhead and take the, and let him take this movie to hell. Let him take this movie to hell. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, fucking... Of course, Lance Henriksen ain't dead because he's not even fucking real. And uh, and then they end up getting saved at the end of the movie. Uh, fucking the police dig them up. And so those two get out. Jake and Chelsea do. And how did the police know they were there? How were they found? Lance Henriksen's character is long gone and he sure in the fuck wouldn't call the police. So how'd they get found? Chelsea looks up in the window and by George, it was fucking Adam's ghost who called the police with a cell phone so they could track them so the police would come there and trace the cell phone and dig them up. 
Oh, oh God. I don't take medication, but I am strongly advising it if you watch this film. No, not, not medication, drugs, drugs. I don't, I'm not a big fan of drugs like cocaine and shit, but if you're, if you're going to watch this film, I would almost recommend snorting a line. I would, I would seriously almost recommend snorting a fucking line. Uh, so they're saved by a fucking ghost, a fucking ghost in a Hellraiser film, a ghost. Uh, uh, and so Lance Henriksen's character is long gone. Chelsea and Jake, they made it out. Lance Harrington's character is sitting in the fucking just a random hotel room. He got away, and he's got the box that Adam made. And lo and behold, the box Adam made is fucking real. It's somehow he made an actual real box, a real box that opens the gates of hell in the real world. He really made one. And then Pinhead shows up. Pinhead is apparently a real demon. He really exists in re in in the reality that this film is trying to present. Pinhead is fucking real. So not only is Hellraiser a movie franchise and everything, but Pinhead is actually real. And if that's not what they're saying, if they're trying to say that this whole Hell World or Hellbound game or fucking Eat Shit game or whatever is based off of like the is based off like the mythology and legends of Pinhead and everything, and that everybody just thought it was fake, uh, then they never make that clear at all. They just sidestep it. But that can't be the case because they got fucking t-shirts with Pinhead on the back of it. And then they got fucking Doug Bradley's voice voicing the fucking video game that they're playing online. The fucking online game has Doug Bradley's voice in it. So it has to be fucking a game based off the franchise, the fucking movie franchise, and the character of Pinhead. So Pinhead randomly shows up here at the end just to have the real Pinhead, it, Pinhead in it just to say, fuck, here he is. He's, he's here, you know, like... Pinhead's here, uh, purely fan service, just to say he is in the movie. Uh, it's meant to be a surprise, but it's you can surprise me all you want in the movie. And it's I like seeing Doug Bradley here, you know, but it still has to make fucking logical sense. So Doug Bradley shows up there. He's Pinhead. He fucking um, Lance Henriksen thinks he must be dreaming or something, because uh, you know why the fuck would Pinhead be there? And that's what I'm thinking too. And then fucking the other two Cenobites throw some big fucking like battle axes or whatever with chains attached to them and slice him and uh slice him into like separate pieces or whatever. Like one goes through straight through here, another one like goes straight down through here or something like that. Uh like one goes through through his chest up here, another one's like through his waist, uh one from right, another one from left, I guess. And he fucking like his body like falls to pieces, like the top half will fall off, and then like the middle half, and then his like lower body will fall or whatever. Uh, that was okay, decent death. That's one of the things that just re I recommend just watching that one death scene. That's okay. Uh, and then after that, the ending to this film, I had it at one and a half stars. No, I had it at like one and a half right there. One and a fucking half is what I had it at. One and a half. And then fucking the ending right here. It's okay. You got Jake and Chelsea who are like driving in their car. And you know, they're getting the fuck out of Dodge. They're happy. Everything's fine. And all of their cell phone rings. And it's fucking Lance Henriksen for some reason calling them. And then they look in the back seat. And Lance Henriksen pops up in there. And he like grabs the steering wheel. And they almost swerve off the road. But they don't. And they're both perfectly fine. And then fucking they look back there. And he's like disappeared. And then they're like looking at each other like, you know, what the fuck just happened? And then that's the end, the end of the movie. It's like one final little thrown in there scare for no reason. And that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at my watch, first of all. And then I'm looking at myself saying, what the fuck just happened? That's, that's what I'm thinking too. I mean, what the fuck did just happen? So we got an Adam's ghost who called the police to save Chelsea and Jake. And then we got fucking, fucking Lance Henriksen's ghost who shows up at the end for one final scare. What? What the fuck? Whatever movie. This movie doesn't fit Hellraiser at fucking all. At all. Part 5 and 6 were like the people in their own personal hells. Those two worked even though they were like a different kind of like thriller type. Well, 5 was like a detective type thriller thing mixed with Hellraiser. That worked because the guy's in his own hell. And like everybody does get their own hell in Hellraiser. So you can kind of see that. And that mixes, you know, decently with the Hellraiser mythology. Same thing with 6. Um, 7, you know, like I said, feels more like a Hellraiser film than 5 or 6. Even though it's shittier than 5 or 6. And then <laughs> this movie, this movie doesn't feel like a Hellraiser film at all. At fucking all. 
And if they want to just do it like, I guess they wanted to do it like this, just wanted to have fun and just do a generic slasher style pinhead movie. But it's not fun. There's nothing in it. And the plot has holes in it. Like the, like I've said, the size of John Holmes' dick. <laughs> so, you know, there's doesn't make any fucking sense half the time. Some of the shit in it doesn't. Like how he managed to bury everybody without everybody else noticing and all that shit. That makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And just the pinhead scenes with him just being generic just makes me want to cry almost because the character is so misused here. Just makes him into such a generic slasher and when he shows up, does a kill, disappears. Uh, just feels so fucking out of place for the character that I can't stand it. Um, but yeah, this is a one-star film. Um... It's not a good film at all. Um, would I recommend watching it? No. Would I recommend the fan? Would I say fans should watch it? No. Would I say horror fans should watch it? No. Should casual movie fans watch it? No. Because if they watched it and they would say, "Man, this movie sucks," you know, is this what Hellraiser is like? You know, I wouldn't want them to, to, to think that this is what the actual franchise is like, because it sure in the fuck ain't. <sighs> I would have rather have seen a sequel with the character of Tiffany in it from part two. The, the girl who likes solving puzzles and everything. I would have rather have seen a sequel with her in it than this fuckfest. I would have rather have seen, if I were the Hellseeker, even though it's just like a, an all right generic, kind of generic movie. Because it kind of copies the part five, the same kind of style, really. Um, even though it's like that, it still is the one, and the only one in the series that feels like, kind of like a direct sequel. Uh, to the Christy, uh, or Kirsty storyline, I mean. Uh, I would have rather have seen a sequel to that one. Maybe have, like, fucking Trevor, like, escape from hell and have him, like, getting people's skin and shit and going after Kirsty or something, anything. That would have been mildly interesting. I would, fuck, I would have liked that better than this movie. That would, I would have liked that better. You could have formed a story out of something like that. You could have formed a story out of fucking anything besides this. This is just horrible. This is, like, bottom of the drain. The life of the franchise has been drained out. Just drained out completely. There's nothing left. Like I, this movie makes me even more mad because I believe I've heard that this film, like I said, was filmed back to back with Part Seven. Uh, you could have took both those films, even though I, I don't really, I don't hate Part Seven. It's just got plot holes the size of fucking <laughs> big enough to drive a fucking dump truck through. You could com you could combine the budgets of the, of Seven and this one and make a, a decent movie, a much better movie. Uh, Hellraiser does not have to have a colossally huge budget to be decent because Five does uh, fucking. You don't need big, huge budgets for Hellraiser to make really out, make really at least decent or to good Hellraiser films. I don't think you can make stories on lower budgets with Hellraiser that can still be entertaining. Uh, you know, delve into the Hellraiser mythology some more. You know, do something. Fuck. Uh, but what? But whatever. Uh, this movie sucks. It's a one-star film out of a possible four. I've tried to get through this review as fast as I humanly possibly could because this film is just shit. It didn't take me like very long to like shrink the plot down and explain almost everything in it or all the stuff that involves like that's important to the story or at least decently important kills and all because it's just a generic slasher film. It's like almost less than generic. It's just Pinhead killing a couple people, not even real Pinhead, then him showing up at the end and fucking killing Lance Henriksen. That's the best scene in the movie, Lance Henriksen's death. Then generic last final scare with Lance Henriksen like popping up. Oh, one more thing. Fucking when Chelsea's trying to get away and she's like getting in a vehicle trying to start it, Lance Henriksen like pops up in the back of it. Uh, she's like at the party and she's trying to get away in this vehicle and Lance Henriksen pops up in the back of it and he looks at her and the vehicle won't start and he goes, just like a bad horror movie, ain't it? Or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, it is just like a bad horror movie. And that line was cheesy as fuck, by the way, Henriksen. Henriksen, Lance Henriksen is a really good actor. Uh, it's sad that he has to be in such a shit pile as this, but you know whatever. I would have I would love to see Lance Henriksen in a Hellraiser film, a real Hellraiser film. This is not a real Hellraiser film. I mean, well, it's got Doug Bradley in his pinhead, so it's real. I guess it's real enough to be a Hellraiser film. It's just a real shitty Hellraiser film. So I'll see you guys again with my final Hellraiser review, uh, Hellraiser Revelations. In that video, I'll wrap up pretty much my final thoughts on the franchise. Um, so I'll see you guys again with that review. Uh, and I really hope that I can make it through that movie because I know, I know it's going to be worse than this one. It's going to take a lot for me to get through this, to get through that next film. So I'll see you guys again with Hellraiser Revelations.